Greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus. We are going to walk on water today. Amen. We are going to walk on water. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And so we are, uh, today is, is we're going to talk about um, something very, very interesting on um, today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And look, um, yeah, most every time the Lord allows us to get on here is something interesting. Amen. And uh, I, to me, amen, it's something interesting every time we get on. The Lord always speaks uh, what he's feeling, what he's saying, um, what he wants us to know. Amen. And then today, uh, this is something that is is needed for the body of Christ, is needed for every individual part that is serious about their walk with the Lord, is needed, amen. If you have not purchased the books, uh, The Reformation of the Bride, you can go to my channel and um, get those, amen. It'll tell you how to get it, they're on Amazon. Saints, you definitely want to get your hands on these books, amen. Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. You definitely want to get your hands on these books if you are serious about your walk with the Lord. Amen. You definitely want to get your hands on these books. Um, I wouldn't say it if it were not true. Amen. You definitely want to get your hands on those. Um, we are going to walk... Uh, a little piece here. We're going to be in Revelations. We're going to be in Matthew. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would allow me, Lord God, to to speak this the way you have given it to me. Lord, I pray that you would use me, Lord, as you will. That you would go before the earbone of the listener, the heart of the listener, Lord. That this seed fall on good ground, Lord, and that it be understood, Lord, um, by those who will come in and listen, Lord. Take heed, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. And so, um, yeah, so we're going to, the Lord gave me an encouraging word for you, amen. And this word might not fit everybody, because everybody's not in that same walk, amen. Some people are just, this is the fad, so we're in a fad, right? And then others are very much so, very, 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 very serious about their walk amen and so those that are very 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 serious you know that it takes uh some stripping off and it takes some putting on right it's not just um a fad it's something that is walked out it's it's called the walk by faith it's called um fighting the good fight which means there is going to be some fighting amen there is not all peaches and cream but there is going to be some fighting. Amen. And most of the fighting is going to take place with you knowing and realizing who you are. Uh, now I just said something then. Most of the fighting, a lot of the fighting, is going to be for you to realize and know who the Lord has made you. Because the earth, okay, and, and many in it. They're going to try to persuade you that you're not who God says you are. Amen. And so with that being said, it's a fight. It's a fight to continue to know who God has made you. Because if you don't know, then the, then there's nothing that the Lord can do as far as what he has planned for your life. Amen. Because you have to know. <laughs> Amen. We have to know uh, who we are. Amen. In Christ. And uh, yeah, that's... That's um, that's, that we have to know. In a nutshell, there's no other uh, more simpler way of saying it. We literally have to know 
who the Lord has made us in order to walk this walk. Amen. Because if we don't, we will fall and fold and fumble and it, it, it'll be a mess, saints. It really be a mess. Let's walk over to Revelation chapter 3. Excuse me. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3. I'm on a different mic today. And, um, yeah, this one is loud. Um, Revelation chapter 3. You have to know. Um, there's a song that says, You gotta know when to hold them. No when to fall them, no when to walk away, no when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. There's plenty of time to count it when the day is done. <laughs> I don't know how many people know that song, but that is pretty hilarious. Amen. And I'm not going to say Garth Brooks sung that. I'm not going to put that on Garth. Although, back in the day, Garth was my guy. Amen. <laughs> Garth Brooks was my guy. This is back in the day. But I'm not going to say, let me, let, me, let me see. Which I know this is folly. This is folly. Forgive me for my folly. But let's see who song is. Let's see. Mm, Kenny Rogers. Forgive me. <laughs> it was Kenny Rogers. Oh my goodness. Kenny Rogers, the gambler. You got and you better know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. You know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the tables, plenty of time to count it when the day is done. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Amen. But honestly, I don't even know. How, I don't even know how that song came into play, but it just popped up in my mind. Amen. It just popped up in my mind. And so, um, here it is. Oh my goodness, now, he said, he said, there'll be time enough to count it when the dealing's done. Now, for all these years, I thought he said, well, the day is done, but how do you fit, say, man? And it took us to be so much because we actually went there. That was Kenny Rogers, everybody. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's Kenny Rogers. But, honestly, you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away, and you got to know when to get the heck out of there. <laughs> amen. And it's just like that. We got to know. Amen. 
And I say that because it ties into the message that the Lord gave me, which is, this is the words that the Lord gave me to share with you. Hold fast to what you have. Do you hear me? Hold fast to what you have. And this is what the Lord gave me verbatim to tell you today. Hold fast to what you have. What's worth nothing today is worth a fortune tomorrow. Amen. So this this word is for those. You come and you come into the pot beam and you're like, Lord, I need a word today. Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I am. Lord, I just need you to help me. I need a word. I need a word from you. Well, this is the word that the Lord gave me for you today. He said, hold fast to what you have. What's worth nothing today is worth a fortune tomorrow. Amen. Hold fast to what you have. What's worth nothing today is worth a fortune tomorrow. Something else that the Lord gave me is this. You're still living you can still fight. Amen. You're still living. You can still fight. You might have said to yourself, you know, I want to be at uh, seven figures before the year is out. Or, or, you know, I want to be the move to this city or this state or this country or this region before the city is out. You know, I want to be have gotten this far in ministry, right, before this year is out. And now you see, okay, that it's October or I want to be married you know, before this year is out, you know what I'm saying? Anything I would like for my husband and I to have kids before this year is out, you know what I'm saying? I would like to, uh, be that found a major, okay, before this year is out. Any life goals, any life goals, okay, you're still living, you can still fight, amen, just because things don't happen when you want it to, it does not mean that it's not going to happen, amen, and sometimes we can be discouraged, we can be dismayed, we can get downhearted, you know what I'm saying, and uh, we can be depressed because it looks like life is not agreeing with what we thought. Amen. And sometimes uh, the things that we want is really not what we need uh, sometimes. And then other times the Lord is going to give it, but he's going to give it in his timing. Amen. So something else the Lord gave me to give you is this. If you're still living, you can still fight. Get up. Amen. If you're still living you're still breathing you can still fight that's it amen that's it in a nutshell you're still here you're still living you're still breathing you can still fight amen and hold fast to what you have what's worth nothing today worth nothing you might feel like you're worth nothing to nobody amen but what's worth nothing today Huh? Is worth a fortune tomorrow. <laughs> What's worth nothing today? And I really pray that you can grab a hold to this word because you might be worth nothing today, but you don't know what tomorrow holds. Amen. There's a song. You don't know what tomorrow brings in a world. Well, few hearts survive. All I know is the way I feel. And if it's real, I'm going to keep it alive. The road is long. And there are mountains in our way. But we climb those steps every day. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Where the world we know, the clear winds blow. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Where the eagles fly. On a mountain high, some hanging to a 
where you used to be living their lives in you to find all we have is you right now right so that's a oh 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 song and i was young way like seven eight nine when they used to sing that song so of course you know i got some words and some words are just mm. but yeah that song lord lift us up where we belong amen because you can walk through this life and this life can make you feel like a duck quack 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 and you can quack 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 on for years and 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 you 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 start to think that you really are a duck and the lord just be looking like look at him look at her she just she just walk around like a duck i made him an eagle i made her an eagle she is quacking around like a duck so i'm just gonna let him keep quacking and let her keep quacking until they realize this is not who you are you cannot listen to what life tells you you're a duck you can't you and this is one of those this is a part of the lord telling us we have decisions to make Whose report will you believe? Either you're going to believe that you're a duck or you're going to believe that you're an eagle. Whose report do you believe? Hold fast to what you have. Hold fast to what you have. Because what's worth nothing today is worth a fortune tomorrow. Revelations chapter 3. Amen. Let's start at three because let's start at verse one. It says, And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore thou, excuse me, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. That thou, thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white remnant and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit has said unto the churches amen let's go on down to we're going to read until 11 all right and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write these things said he that is holy he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Now, verse 8 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced, okay, any doors being closed that you felt were open, but you saw them closed right in your face, right? I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like this, but the, the, beauty, the beauty of this is that it is important, okay, and I know this is going to sound a little weird, but it's important to have experienced this. You know what I'm saying? Because if you have if you have not experienced 
doors shutting in your face. <laughs> if you haven't experienced this, then it's really, really, really hard to appreciate what the Lord is saying in verse 8. You know what I'm saying? But if you have experienced doors closing in your face, if you have experienced uh, others being chose over you time after time after time after time, and if you if you stop and if you go by your report, not the report of the Lord, but if you start to go by your report of the things that are happening to you, you will start quacking like a duck. And you will feel like you're a duck because yeah, I must be a, du- a duck if every time I look around, everybody else is being picked over me. I must be a duck, right? But then this is this is a continuance of the walk by faith. Amen. Even if this is happening to you, it does not mean that you're a duck. <laughs> Amen. It just means that the last will be first and the first will be last. That's all. Amen. Whose report will you believe? It all boils. This always, always, always going to boil back down to what the word says. I've learned this in my life. That is always going to boil right back down to what the word say. Amen. It's, it's, it's always. It's a given. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter how many times you flip that burger. Amen. It's always going to boil right back down to the rock, the rock of ages. Amen. Because he's been here since before the beginning. He says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Now, just imagine all these doors closing your face. Bam, 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 bam. Right in your face. And it's funny. And it's, it's funny for those at, 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 at a at a certain time, it's really funny. Ah, uh, you thought you were going to go through this door. Ah, uh, he thought he was going to go through that door. Ah, uh, she thought she was going to go through this door. Yeah, it's just, it's so funny, right? It's so funny. But the thing about it is, the Lord is always the one that gets the last laugh. You know what I'm saying? He is always the one that gets the last laugh. And many times, the Lord allows it to be this way because there are many doors he don't want you in in the first place. He don't want you in there. Amen. It's just, it's just, it wasn't ordained for you to be. Amen. And with that being said, we have to, the walk by faith is to continue. It's like a water. It's like water that's continuing to move. It's, it's cleansing. Every day is a cleansing. Just imagine you, amen, and you're like, this door is about to open. This door is about to open. This door is about to open. It's my time. It's my turn. It's my season. It's this, this, and this. And you walk right up to the door, and bam, it slammed right in your face. Hmm. Well, you continue to walk by faith, but the the Lord has got to continue to cleanse you. Amen. <laughs> he continues to cleanse us because we can still walk by faith, but then you always remember. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get you for that. I'm going to get you for this. I'm going to get you for that. I'm going to get you for this. This is where the washing of the word of the word comes into place. No, you should thank them because they are le- they are unconsciously leading you to the door that I have ordained for you that they cannot close. Neither can any man open it. I, it is I, said the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So if we can look at, if we can look at it like that, if we can look at life like this, if we can look at opportunities like this, then I believe that we could be healthier individuals instead of, you know, Carrying a heavy load of bitterness and being resentful and being hateful and being spiteful and being cruel and be just, you know what I'm saying? Going to uh, chant curses on people and all this old nonsense, you know? If we can look at it like all of these, cl- just imagine yourself in a in a hallway and imagine yourself as a sheep. And, you know, sheep have to be led, right? So imagine yourself as a sheep and you're in a hallway. This is something unfamiliar to you because sheep usually abide in a pasture. So you're in a hallway, right? And and 
in this long hallway, there are just a bunch of doors on, on both sides of the hallway. Well, if the Lord didn't allow these doors, the ones that he didn't want you in, if he didn't allow these to close, you or me as a sheep, we go in trying to find what food we go in trying to find water we go in just you know what i'm saying we just because sheep have to be led right so he's a good good father to allow all these doors to close to keep you walking forward to the door that he desires for you and the door he desires for me does that make sense so there's he said in all things give thanks for this is my will concerning you you know what i'm saying and so this is it's it's amazing um it's amazing to me the things you do for me and i've never seen your face man it's amazing if you look at it through the eyes of the lord if you look at it in all things give thanks for this is my will concerning you if you look at it you can see that this is the grace of the lord at the time oh this is my time and this is my turn and this is my chance and it and it don't feel good that bam 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 these doors slamming in your face it don't feel good but it is for the good amen it is for the good it is saints it's for the good it says i know thy works behold i have set before thee an open door now you can we can appreciate this open door because so many have been closed bam 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 so the lord says i have set before you an open door and no man that means nobody can shut it. <laughs> this is this is what you call a supernatural door that nobody can shut it. Hold fast to what you have. What's worth nothing today is going to be worth a fortune tomorrow. Hold fast. He says, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. Now, when I tell you (laughs) that, when I tell you that there are those of us that have a little strength, you know what I'm saying? When I tell you that sometimes you can find yourself in a place where you fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight, and fight, 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 until you find yourself in, it's kind of sort of like Job, you just sit down in the ashes. And I know that back then, and even sometimes today, people use sackcloth and ashes as far as a a um, way of um, of uh, crucifying them to their flesh, or as a way of um, sacrifice, things like this. But when Job sat down in them ashes, it just hit different. You know what I'm saying? Job sat down in the ashes, and you know that was a little strength there. And he said, no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Even with a little strength, you still have kept the word of my patience, and you have not denied my name. What is the word of his patience? His word, the word of his patience is having patience with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's like, Lord, I just knew that this was my season. This is this is my season. This is my it's for grace, for favor. It's my season to read what I have sold. I just knew that this was the season for all that. And it, it and when I'm looking, it don't seem like it's the season for all that. But I just felt like it was the season for all that. But all that didn't come to me. I didn't I didn't get the stuff that I sold yet. And I haven't I haven't you know what I'm saying? And in this place, there is a patience that has to override what we feel, what we think. 
how we think the way that things are supposed to be. There's a patience that has to override now. So the word of his patience. Lord, you said this in your word and you said that. I also said be patient. In patience you possess your soul. Amen. Because if not, the doors that are allowed to close, bam, 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 bam. You'll take something and try to pry it open. And you'll realize once you go in there and it seems like I it seems like I was keeping you from something. But once you really go in and really realize what's in this room, you'll realize that this is why the Lord didn't want me to go in here. Sometimes we don't know what's good for us. Everything that looks good for us doesn't mean it's good. Amen. Everything that looks good doesn't mean it's good. And so sometimes we can be so tired of fighting until we can just just say, okay, this is good for me. This is this fits where I am and this is my out. No, that's not your out. That's not your out. Um so he says, You kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogues of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. To know that I have loved thee. I have set before you an open door. This is what the Lord says. I have set before you an open door. And no man can shut it. No man, no influence, no words, no lies, no schemes, no not no man can shut this door. No man can do it. Because the Lord says, I, even I, have opened this door for you. Hold fast to what you have. What's worth nothing today is worth a fortune tomorrow. Hold fast. He says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogues of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the words of my patience. The word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold I come quickly. Verse 11. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown that part he says behold I come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown amen that no man take thy crown the Lord said, hold fast, amen, which thou hast. Hold fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. All right, verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. Which is new Jerusalem. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the spirit has said to the church. Now. Hold fast to what thou hast. Let no man take that crown. <clears throat> How can a man take your crown? How can a man take your crown? Okay. A man can take your crown. If you stop abiding by the word of God. And if you begin to believe the report of what you see, one of the ways a man can take your crown is if you have been chosen by God, 
but you have not been chosen by man. Do you understand? If you have been chosen by God, but you have not been chosen by man. And it look and it looks like this. You got a team, you got a whole bunch of people, you got about 20 people standing in the field. And the we and then the 20 people they nominate two captains. You're going to be a captain. You're going to be a captain, right? So the two captains go stand off, and each one of them are calling the team players that they want. I'm going to take you. That one runs over there to that captain. Hey, I'm going to take her. She runs over to that captain. I'm going to take him. He runs, he runs, then she runs, and they run, and they run. And you are the last one that is standing in the middle of the field. And how do you feel? You know what I'm saying? How do you feel being the last one? Uh, you feel proud? Do you feel joyful? Um, you feel like going on to see what the end is going to be? Right? <laughs> Do, what are your feelings being the only one standing in the middle of the field? Do you feel worthless? Yeah, probably worthless. Do you feel insignificant? Yeah, probably insignificant. Um, what do you, what are you feeling? Do you feel shame? Yeah, you feel shame. Especially because you know that you practice soccer. You've mastered it. You know what I'm saying? And you're really good at soccer. This is what we're about to play. But yet, everybody's picked. Even, even the ones you know are not as good as you. They, everybody been picked and you're still in the middle of the field. And you know that you know the game. You know what I'm saying? But you like you your your knowledge of knowing your knowledge of knowing that you know this game your knowledge of knowing that you know which way to kick it if this if this captain picked me I know which way to kick the ball if that captain kick uh, pick me I know which way to kick the ball and you know strengths and weaknesses of different ones and so you know you know how to navigate your way through the game you know the game you studied the game right you studied to show yourself approved yet you are still standing in the middle of the field unpicked. But the good thing, the good news is this. You still have your crown. Because you know and you have the knowledge. Right? And the understanding that you know the rules of the game. And you know how to play the game. And you know how to how to be underneath the captain. You know all this. You know what I'm saying? You know all this. So you still have your crown because you have that knowledge. But how can your crown be taken from you in this instant? Because there's a lot of us that have experienced this very thing, which I'm explaining to you. Always being looked over, always being picked over. And if you are picked to do something, it's something little because guess what? You can't handle the big stuff, right? So, here we are in the middle of the field, but we still have our crown. And... There are those, they know that you're knowledgeable of the game. They've been watching you. They know that you can play. They've seen you play before. They know that you know your stuff. They've been watching, right? But I won't pick you because you might know about, about what I know. This is the captain. You might know about what I know. Or you might know a little bit more than I know. So I don't need nobody on my team that know more than I know, right? So here you are in the middle of the field, but you still have your crown on. It's not good enough that you're shamed. It's not good enough that you're embarrassed. It's not good enough that you're hurt. It's not good enough that you feel insignificant. It's not good enough. Why? Why is it not good enough? It's not good enough because you still have on your crown. That's why. 
That's why it ain't good enough for you to be standing in the field by yourself. That's why it's not good enough for all these teams, all these team members to be looking at you and all these team members to be looking at you and everybody see you're still in the middle of the field. It's still not good enough because you got on that crown. The Bible tells us, he said, behold, he said, behold I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. How can your crown be taken in this instant? You're in the middle of the field. How can your crown be taken? You're you're embarrassed. You're shamed. You're hurt. You feel insignificant. You feel you know. You feel angry. You feel you feel all of these things because even those that are more insignificant than you have been chosen, but you're still not chosen. So all of these emotions are going on, but you still have your crown. How can your crown be taken? Well. One of the captains can suggest that maybe you be a water boy. Hey, we'll take you as a water boy. A water boy? A water girl? A water girl? A water boy? So now you drop your shoulders, you go over, and now you realize that you're over the water. You're not over the ball. You're not over which way the ball is going. You're not over stopping the ball from going into the opposer's net. Or you're not over kicking the ball into your net and scoring for your team. And the whole crowd, ah, 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 everybody's cheering for you. Ah, ah. No, you're over giving people water. In this instant of giving people water. You still have your crown. It is up to you in a daily life circumstance. It is up to you when these trial tribulations come to test you, to test your patience. It is up to you whether or not you hold fast to what you have. What is it? What do you have? You have the knowledge of who you are. That is what you have. And if you let any man, any woman take it, that is how they take your crown. You might be over the water. I'm over the water and I got to give them water. And I got to give them water. But when you give them water, have you changed your mind about who you are? Have you changed your mind about knowing the game? Have you changed your mind about studying the game, having played the game? Have you changed your mind about knowing how to goal and knowing how to stop a goal? Have you changed your mind about knowing how to work with opposers and knowing how to work with team players and, and knowing how to work with captains? Have you changed your mind about what you know about yourself? The Lord makes us servants all day. But just because you're giving water, is that, is that all you're worth? What, what are you worth today? Because it's not up to another man, it's not up to another woman to tell you what you're worth. And if you are one of the ones that is waiting for another man, another woman to tell you what you're worth, where is your crown today? Because the Lord told us who we were. He said, let no man take your crown from you. So you may be giving water. And you may be giving water. And you may be giving water. But I am a daughter of Zion. And I have been called for such a time as this. This is what you got to know. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. Hold fast to what you have. Life comes up. Things come up. People treat you a certain way. Hold fast to what you have. And don't you let nobody take your crown. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25 real quick. Matthew chapter 25. I had, I was thinking about something before I got on Podbean. And it's this. 
Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus, he prayed such prayers till sweat fell from his face like great drops of blood. Just imagine Jesus taking a a a handkerchief and wiping his face at this very moment. Jesus knowing that he has to be crucified for those that care nothing for him. And he's praying, Lord, let this cup pass from me. And he takes this handkerchief. He takes this cloth. And as he's praying and as he's crying earnestly, he begins to wipe his face with this cloth. So time goes on and and Jesus, yeah, it, it, he, he has to do what he has to do. But yet, the cloth was left behind. The cloth, the very cloth that he took and wiped his face. He wiped these tears, these bitter tears. He wiped his face with this cloth. And this same cloth makes it to you. This same cloth. That's full of the anointing and full of the power and full of the glory. This same cloth. But because we have no knowledge of what this cloth has, has, who, who had this cloth and what's been done to this cloth. Because we have no knowledge and no understanding and no revelation of what this cloth is, we take this cloth that has made it now to me in 2023. I take this cloth here and I use it, uh, to, uh, wipe the table. I take this cloth and I use it to wipe, to wa- to wash off of wash the toilet stool off. I take this cloth and I use it to go out and and and, and uh, wash off my rims, wash my rims and wash my tires. This cloth, this cloth, it's not any other cloth. It's this cloth, this cloth that Jesus Himself, Jesus the Christ, before He was crucified, Jesus took this cloth and wiped his face as he was praying this cloth full of the anointing this cloth full of the glory this cloth (laughs) and I take this cloth because I have no revelation of what it is and I'm just using it for just uh, uh, sometimes I'm going to put it on the floor I step on it I'm going to step on it because this this spot right here has got a little hole I put this cloth and we just walk on this cloth we walk on it and we use it to dust and we use it to you know just whatever we need it for we just we just it it doesn't it it just we just use it just for whatever because it don't matter this cloth that's full of history this cloth just because we don't have the revelation of what this cloth represents just because we don't have the understanding of what this cloth where this cloth has been this cloth has been in the garden of Gethsemane this cloth has been in the hands of Jesus this cloth and because we don't have the revelation does it mean that this cloth hadn't been where it has been Does it mean that it wasn't there to wipe the face of Jesus? Does it mean that? Does it mean just because we're taking this cloth and we're washing the windows with it, we're washing the floors with it, we're washing the toilet with it, we just do it. Does it, does it take anything away from where this cloth has been? Does it take anything away from who has had this cloth? No, it does not. It does not. That cloth is still a cloth that was in the hands of Jesus. That cloth is still a cloth that Jesus used to wipe his face. That cloth is still a cloth that's anointed with power. That cloth. So just because somebody might not have the revelation of who you are. And they may use you. They may take you and wash the windows with you. They may take you and scrub the floors with you. They may take you and wipe the toilets with you. You don't let nobody take your crown. Hold fast to what you have. 
Because what's, what's worth nothing today can be worth a fortune tomorrow. You take somebody that comes in and says, Now this cloth, this, this is the same cloth that Jesus had in the Garden of Gethsemane. I know because the way they describe the cloth that he had, everything on that cloth is on this one that you got that stuck in the window because you was trying to keep the, the rain from leaking in your house. You're trying to keep the rain from coming in through your window. So you took this cloth and you stuck it in that hole right there. But I'm seeing it. And that cloth is the same. It looks like the same thing that they described from time and time and time back. That's the same cloth. But he don't know it. That's the same cloth. But she don't know it. What can I do to get that cloth because now you got somebody with the revelation knowledge of Jesus that knows that cloth. That cloth don't belong stuck in the windowsill. That cloth don't belong washing the toilets. That cloth don't belong scrubbing the floors. Do you know what you have? Do you know what you have? And they begin to bargain and trade. Hey, I tell you what. I, what, what what can I get for what 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 can I give you for that cloth right there? To my to my dad, yeah, that one stuck in your window. Man, you don't want that. I got I got I just bought new towels. No 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 no. I don't need no new towel. I just what you what can I give you for that? Uh, I don't I don't want nothing for that. You can have that. I can. Yeah, go on and get it. Hold fast to what you have. Because what's worth nothing today is worth a fortune tomorrow. Don't let... You might be stuck in a windowsill. But you got to have the knowledge, the revelation of who you are to know. Hallelujah. And this is how you keep your crown. This is how you keep your crown. I used to be one of those that hated confrontation. And I still don't like it. Amen. But I've come to the point in my life where if it comes up and it's got to do with the word, I'm not I'm, I'm not about to just bow. I'm not finna bow when it comes to this word. I'm not finna do it. And if confrontation comes, it comes. You know what I'm saying? We have to be at that point. Because sometimes we could be so, we don't want to be rejected. And we don't want to be ostracized. We don't want to be criticized. And we don't want to be looked at a certain way. And especially when it comes maybe to those close to us. I don't want to be looked at a certain way. And I don't want to be this. And I don't want to be that. And my mom, papa, and I don't want to be this. And I don't want to be that. You're going to have to make a choice. You will. You will. You have to make a choice. Because they 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 might think that God ain't where it's at. And 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 you we we as daughters and sons, the Lord is always, always, always going to make us make choices in life. We have to. Because he wants to see, will you, will you step away from everything for me? Or is it just, did you just step away from them? Cause they, you know, them ain't, they ain't close to you. They ain't your cousin. They ain't your, when you, you, you know that, you know, you'll step away from them. But I want to know, will you step away from everybody? And a lot of, a lot of times, believers don't allow the Lord to, we don't, we don't, we don't, we like this stuff is this part is off limits. I denied the world for you. I denied this. I denied that. But I can't be like Abraham. You don't tell me to put my son and crucify my son. Don't tell me that. I, I can't go that far now, Lord. But he want to know who will go this far. As to say, no to my son. No to my daughter. I'll crucify him if you tell me to. Who will go this far? Who is serious? 
about God who's serious enough Matthew 25 verse 1 then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom now when they took their lamps I mean this is just something that we do we take our lamps this is what we do this is what we do we take our lamps right and five of them were wise and five were foolish. But I'm sure at the time, there was no distinction between any of them. All of us have lamps. All of us, this is what we do. We're going to be the bride grow. woo de woo woo right? There is no distinction between any of them. But the Bible and the Word already knows that five of five of y'all are wise and five of y'all are not. The Bible knows, but they don't know. Oh, hey, all of us doing the same thing. woo de woo woo right? So in five are wise, five are foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So all of them are doing the same thing. All of them slumbered. All of them slept. All of them went to meet the bridegroom. All of them took, uh, what, vessels? Five of them were wise, the foolish, lamps. Okay, all of them took their lamps. Okay, all of them took their lamps. All of them went to meet the bridegroom. So we're going the distance, right? And we're walking the walk by faith. All of us are walking the walk by faith. All of us have lamps. We have our lamps, right? All of us are slumbering. All of us are sleeping. All of us are doing the same thing. But yet there is a distinction. All right? So the Lord says, hold fast to what you have. Hold fast to what you have. Because what's worth nothing right now to them, it really ain't worth nothing. All of us is doing the same thing. All of us is going. All of us got lamps. All of us is loving. All of us is sleeping. Hey, all of us is, hey, we all in the same basket. But what's worth nothing right now is worth everything in the next. It's worth everything in the next. Because all of us doing the same thing. There's nothing special about me. There ain't nothing special about you. All of us doing the same thing. But yet, when the time comes, the times will tell you what's special and what's not. The times. The times. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now the time to go and meet him has come. And now the time is going to distinguish who is wise and who is foolish. The times. Not the man. The man says she's wise and she's not. The woman says she's wise and she's not. But see, during this time... The woman and the man's words are not going to matter now. Because the time is going to distinguish who's wise and who's not. The times. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And then at midnight, that's the time, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom coming. Go ye out to meet him. And now, because the time has come, now the time distinguishes Who's the water boy and who should be playing on the field? Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Least there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell. And buy for yourselves. The wise are wise for a reason. Now what if the wise would have took what they had and gave it away? Then that would have been foolish, right? So the Lord sent me to share with you. Hold fast to what you have. And let no man take your crown. What is your crown? The knowledge of who you are. Whether you're stuck in the windowsill. Whether you're being cleaned by cleaned on the floor. They're using you to clean the toilet. Or the, you still know who you are. Hold fast. And let no man 
take your crown. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I pray that this word helps somebody. I tell you what. I love you so much. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. And until next time. Be blessed. In Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>